Hello, gentle people. If this is your first time visiting my channel, or if you are a returning subscriber, welcome to this Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. Uh, I hope that you will see and hear something that inspires you to create something beautiful. I'm Hazel Sanders Sparrow, retired educator turned resin artist, and each week I share how I create the products that are available in my Etsy shop and in my Shopify store. And right now, I'm in the process of adding new holiday and special occasion gifts to my shop each week. In my last video, number 139, I created two charcuterie boards uh, that had a business logo on them and they were showcased at a business networking event. I was like thrilled. This week, I will share how I created a cute custom It's a Girl baby shower charcuterie board that can be filled with all the goodies that the mom-to-be loves. As always, if you like what you see but don't want to take the time to make it yourself, please feel free to purchase it at SparrowArtVibes.Boutique. Also, if you are inspired by my video, please do like, share, and if you're not a subscriber, of course, subscribe. Um, and so that brings us to the point in the video where I share the materials we need to make the It's a Girl charcuterie board. Let's look at our materials. Of course, if we're doing a charcuterie board, we do need uh, a bamboo board, bamboo or acacia wood, whatever kind of wood you like. Um, I like bamboo because it's um, sustainable. Uh, rapidly grows, easy to reproduce, on and on and on. We tape off the back of the board with some uh, painter's tape. And we need some gesso. And we put that on the board in the areas that we're going to paint and put artwork on. Need a brush for the gesso. And I try to present the materials in the order in which I'm going to use them. So the next thing would be um, our acrylic paint. I have here Master's Touch Purple Red, Master's Touch Light Magenta, Master's Touch Dark Titanium White. To add a little bit of um, sheen, as it were, we are going to be using Deco Arts extreme sheen in the pink tourmaline and instead of a balloon this time I'm going to be uh, doing my paint with this little foam thingy foam like a sponge once our artwork is dry we will be adding the text with the clear water slide decal paper I haven't exactly decided which color vinyl I'm going to use, the dark or the light. I'll decide that after it's painted and I can see which color looks the best. And once all of that is done, then it's time for our uh, sealer. So we need our Craft Smart Part A resin, our Craft Smart Part B hardener. We need a measuring cup, we need a stir stick, we need our nitro gloves. And that's it. So let me get all this stuff off this uh, table and we will get started with prepping our board. The first thing we need to do is tape off the back side of the board. Um, but in order to do that, you have to know where your artwork is going. So I have printed off this uh, woman, this mom-to-be, uh, and I like the size of that. We're going to put that on this side of the board. And then I like this rainbow and the It's a Girl. We're going to put it on this side of the board. 
So since we're doing this side and this side, we're going to tape these three sides. So let's do that now. And we're not going past that hole, so I'm not even going to tape. I'm not going to tape up that far. Just going to burnish this along the edges real good and then take our and then we're just going to take our razor blade and trim come around that curved edge real good that's nice and finished. All right. And just make sure that's tight to the edge. And again, what I tend to do is place my artwork so that I can have an idea of where I want. Um, so I position my artwork where I want it to go and then kind of pencil out around the artwork a line for there. And then we're going to put the this would be nice if this fit right up in that corner, but it won't because it would be, look silly. Uh, actually, let me trim this because I don't want straight lines. And so if I put that there, then we know we're wanting our resin to come, uh, yeah, like so, like so. So we are putting gesso here and here. Again, when you put the food on the board, you can't see the artwork, but once this is finished and they've used it as a board, then they can put it on an easel um, and use it as a keepsake. So now we need to do our gesso. Now again, I watch tons and tons, well not, that's a lot. I watch a number of videos where people, in fact, I'll, I think I'll try and insert a couple of images for you, where I see people do these boards and the wood shows through. Now, everybody's got their personal preference. I just think the wood showing through is not attractive. And as I'm always saying, if you are using light colors, they simply look better over white than they do over the brown um, over the brown wood. Look at me, can't find my words. And this serves as a primer. You can always do this in acrylic paint. I use the gesso because that's what it was designed for. Um, you put it on canvases. And it seals the canvas so that the canvas doesn't soak up all of your paint. So you want to make sure you get your sides done. And again, this is not a, a painting job. Again, this is just when we add our background, we want the colors on the background to be as vibrant as they can be. And they will be vibrant if they are against white and not against this wood.
and we'll just leave this sit here to dry for about an hour and then we'll come back and we'll paint the background in that pretty pink palette. I am back. The uh, gesso has dried, so now we want to paint our background. And so, ooh, this is always the hard part, trying to decide what colors to put where. Um, so I'm going to start with the dark titanium white because this is, this has the ivory, the beige, that's beige, up here. So we're going to start with that. And then let's do the light, what is this light? Ooh, I've got it upside down, you can't see it. The light magenta. Let's do some of that around here. I'm just running that brush inside that hole there. This is an odd name for this purple red. And I want you to see just how companies name their colors. This is called pink. This is called purple red. This to me looks more like a salmon or a peach. This looks more like pink. Why they named them the way they did, I do not know. I'm trying to be different, I guess. And so we're just coloring the background. And I think I probably want some color over here too. I don't know. And I had my trusty sponge. What did I do with that sponge? So we're just going to, oops. And again, I don't like brush strokes. I don't like the lines to show. And so if you use the balloon or you use the sponge, uh, you can get rid of the lines and you have some texture added to your board. And I'm kind of roughing out the placement of this artwork. And we can always cut it. And we'll do the same on the other side. Um, I think on this other side we're going to do mostly pink. And this is actually that magenta. So I'm just painting the sides. I don't know if it's still in the frame of the camera. I've got to get me a new camera set up. When I finally start making some money. I don't like that pink right there. I'm going to wipe that out of there. Let's see, we can wipe this. I don't like that there. I want this area to be the um, dark titanium. This can kind of be straight. Oh, 
right, so I have this um, Extreme Sheen Pink Tourmaline. And we're going to put some of this. Okay, that's what we're after. There we go. I think we're going to leave this like this until this dries and after we apply the artwork then we can go back um, and add more but yeah she's going right there like that so we're gonna let this dry and uh, then we'll come back and uh, in a couple of hours and we will add the artwork and um, take it from there Our background colors have dried and so now we're ready to affix the artwork and the text. Now let me just tell you a couple of things. When you saw this um, earlier, this was painted, this was painted. Off camera, I added this color along the bottom to make these connect. It looked kind of disjointed, color here, color here. And blank now it looks like they belong together the other difference and I'll put the image I'll put a shot I don't know insert a shot right here um, this was also pink going across the center here um, and again after you look at something it's kind of like ah, I don't really like that let me go back and change it so the two changes I made were I got rid of the pink line that was here and then I added pink here to connect these two. So now we want to um, add our artwork. So we'll start with the water slide paper. When I did this the other day, it didn't work quite the way it was supposed to, um, but we made it happen. All right, so in addition to painting this pink and getting rid of that line, I made another change and that was, this was the artwork that I originally showed you. This is the artwork that I will be using. The difference in these two is that she now has hair. Um, I use a company called Creative Fabrica for most of my artwork. There's another comp new company called Kittle, uh, but Creative Fabrica is what I use. And so when I went online and I chose this woman, uh, you can see here that you have a choice of what color you want her dress to be. You also can choose her hairstyle. She can have straight hair, curly hair, ponytail, and this is all strictly drag and drop. So I don't know if you're old enough to remember paper dolls, but this is kind of like working with a paper doll. So again, that's what I originally showed you, but I went back and gave her some hair. So let's see if I can get this to go on properly. Some days it works just the way it's supposed to, other days it does not. So we're just going to get this wet for a minute or so. 
and where's the rainbow and the rainbow I made the rainbow a little bit smaller so with our water slide and again I'm not a what do you call it I'm not an affiliate marketer so I don't actually promote uh, different uh, business and sources but I do tell you the brands that I am using uh, but I don't get any monetary uh, compensation for doing so. so let those soak for a minute all right so let's see she is ready to slide but I see I have a crack whoa She's ready to slide, but there's a line. Let's move her down some. out the moisture for some reason my artwork has a line in it it cracked so we're just going to push the moisture out of that Then I am going to take a razor, not a new one, and I am just going to trim remaining okay that looks pretty good and then let's do our little rainbow I'm gonna take this off and we're going to print a new one let's just take this off trash this and we'll do a new one how about that but what we can do now is add um, is add our lettering. And so, and so this I printed in vinyl and I actually, it's funny how you change. I showed you in the materials I was choosing between the lighter pink and the brighter pink and I actually wound up choosing a magenta so go figure so let's get this off of here Yeah. 
here. Lost my G. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. So I have to go and reprint the um, rainbow that goes up here. Burnish this in place. All right, I'll be back. Gotta go make a new one of those rainbows. All right, I am back. Let's set that there, set that there. And I printed a new, um, on the other rainbow, it tore at the end and I guess it was too much waste of time to try and fix that. So we're going to see if this one works any better. So we're dropping it in our water. We'll let that sit for about a minute or two. Um, this should be ready to come off now. Yep, look at that. Very good. That's the way we want it to happen. Oops, straighten that out. Ah, good job. Glad I redid this. Woo. Glad I redid this. Saves an enormous amount of time trying to repair something that's torn. There we go. That's what we want. That's what we want. <gasps> I'm glad I redid that. And you can see the water you can, as it's being blotted up. You can see that. good. Glad I decided to redo it instead of wasting time trying to fix it. Look at that. So what I am going to do now <clears throat> is I am, let me get rid of this water. Get this out. All right, so now what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to turn this this way. You can see uh, some of the gesso showing down there. Um, you can see some white over here. So now I'm just going to take my little uh, bingo dauber head that I had, and I'm going to just touch up those areas right around here. I'm going to turn it to stand that up. Right around here, you have some white showing white showing down there so we're just going to touch that up. Let me get my paints. And let's see. Let's do a little, a little pink around there. I'm definitely glad that I took that line out of there. And I'm just using my, um, let me turn this around. I'm just using the three, 
I am just dabbing on my three pinks, the purple red, the the pink tourmaline, the light magenta, and the purple red. I'm just dabbing these on. And we'll let this dry about an hour and then we'll come back in and we will seal this in resin. Okay, so I think I'm satisfied. So that's our baby shower charcuterie board. Once this dries, then we will seal it in resin. All right, our um, artwork is dry. So now what we need to do is just mix our clear resin to coat and seal this. So, okay, my measuring cup has been marked for 40 milliliters. So we need 20 milliliters of the Part B hardener. and 20 milliliters of the Part A resin. As always, I remind you to follow the manufacturer's instructions. And in the case of Craft Mart, we are supposed to be doing equal parts of part A and part B, which is a one-to-one -one mixing ratio that we just did. And then it says we are supposed to mix for a minimum of five minutes, which is what we are going to do. So I'll set my timer for five minutes. So now all we're going to do is pour the resin onto the board and get this sealed. So I'm just going to start here. Oh, you know what I don't do that I should be doing in my videos, but it's because I know that my table is not level. Um, leveler, you need a leveler. I never, I I always leave this out because I know I've got to put popsicle sticks under my cups on this side because this is where I sit at the table. So this side of my table has worn, has started to bend. But we need a leveler. And so that, again, is saying that this needs to be elevated on this side, which we already know. So let's get my sticks under there. stick under there so that looks good that way and then where's the resin right there and then so on this side let's angle this some
just so you can see it. There we go. All right. Again, I never, I always forget to put the leveler out here because I know what my table is like. And I know I just need popsicle sticks on this side. So again, we're just going to pour our resin. And then we're going to just take the popsicle stick and just put some resin along the edges here. Uh, this is just almost like a base coat. You're not putting this on what I want to say. This is, think of this as a starter because where it's on the sides, this is going to pour off. If you put it on heavy, it's just going to drip off. So we're not putting this on heavy. We're just coating these edges. Just coating the sides. And a lot of times it's easier to do it with your fingers because then you can feel what you're doing, particularly when I'm on like the other side of the board where, where the camera is. It's a lot easier to do it with my fingers. And so this is just a thin, this is not a coat for, this is just a thin little coat. So when you get to the edge, it's got something to cling to. All right. And then I like to take my palette knife. You can always use uh, the back of a spoon, I say all the time. Spread your resin. And if you've watched any of my videos, I never bring the resin all the way out to the edge of the artwork in the beginning because once we hit it with the heat gun, it's going to warm up, it's going to expand. And the first few times I did this, then all my resin ran over the artwork and it was out on the board. And then I kept trying to clean it off. And it was just like, you know, well, maybe I need to. Be patient and wait. Okay, so we see we have a great big spot right here that we missed. And before I started using a leveler, you don't really notice it if you're doing beverage coasters because they're so small. But after I did the first couple of boards, I put the resin on, used the heat gun, came back, and all of my resin had not only gone past the line of the artwork, but it had all run this direction. And after like the third time of it doing that, then it's like, you know, your table must not be level. And so you need to go back and fix that. So I bought a leveler and that's how I figured out that all I need to do is add popsicle stick to this side and then my table is fine. And if any of this runs over, just run your palette knife underneath the edge here and catch any drips. And that seems to be doing okay. So we're going to pour some more resin on here. And since that is not moving, again, that means my table is level. And so now we can begin the process of moving this to the edge of the artwork. And just take the tip of your palette knife. Just, just to the edge. Because again, we have some resin left over in our measuring cup that we're going to be using. And so when you add resin, this will spread. So we're going right up.
and I think this looks so much nicer with the pink going across the bottom than it did with just pink on one side and pink on the other side. Now it, they're connected. resin right there. It should not be there. Got right out of there. And you'll notice most of, if you've looked at any of my videos, most of my boards I don't use, uh, I don't tape straight lines. I like, um, they keep using the word organic. Uh, I think just, and I don't think of it as, as organic, I think of it more as motion or movement. It creates more interest if you have some curves than it does if you have all straight lines. We need to save the rest of what we have um, for the sides. And then this hole, we're going to take some resin on this stick put resin inside the hole that has been painted. And again, most of this is going to drip right off, but we're just getting that coating. Oops. And we'll come back in about uh, 15 minutes. Well, not 15, because we've been at this a little bit. Uh, so that we can do our sides. But again, you don't want to do your sides while the resin is thin. You want to let this resin set up a little bit so when you put it on the sides, it doesn't run right off. Because you'll put it on the sides and you'll walk back in here and it will have all dripped right down. Okay, am I missing any spots? A little bit there. And then like here the resin ran over a little bit so just scoop it back. All right, heat gun one more time. I think we need a spot there and a spot there. So we're going to make sure we clean that out of there. Make sure we clean that out of there. Okay, that looks good. And again, this is not, we put the heat gun to this and this did not start moving forward, which means that the board is level. And that's what we need is a level board. And so I'll be back. I'm back. And we have just a, a dab of resin left in the bottom of this measuring cup and so now we're going to go along the edges and some of this will drip off so don't don't get alarmed if you put it on and then you look and it's all on the mat and notice that I'm no longer on that uh, pad when I'm doing my boards I do the decorating on the pad 
but when I do the resin I'm always on a silicon mat just because this way when it drips down you can scoop it up and you can put it back on your board if it drips down on the mat it's just on the mat you can't do anything with it because if you try and pick it up you'll wind up with lint and everything else so this now is not going to drip off as fast it's still a little thin still a little thinner than I like it put it on and then just take your popsicle stick and drag it underneath and whatever you pick up just put it right back up on your board and that's pretty good yeah I'm glad I'm glad that I um, added this pink through the middle here to tie these two sides together And again you do have to come back and check your work because air bubbles will pop up those little pesky rascals and then you'll wind up with just a little bit of let's get rid of the rest of this yeah see how thick that is and again that's why it's important for you to know your working time So again, you want it thick enough ooh, that it will stay on the sides when you put it on your sides. And now I'm just getting rid of what's left in here. Okay, we'll hit it with the heat gun one more time and then we will cover this and allow it to cure overnight. And I'm just using these little alcohol squares I used to buy the um, big alcohol wipes and I wound up letting it drop into my resin because you have to ball it all up in your hand in order to hold it and so I found that these smaller ones are just easier to work with. So I'm just cleaning up this edge. I need to take off the glove. There you go. Okay, so I am going to cover this and we will allow this to cure overnight. Gentle people, it is the next morning and so what we need to do now is uncover this and get the tape off the back, get the edges sanded and we will be done. So let's take a look. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. And so what we need to do now, that's that's cute. That's cute. Is get the tape off the back. So we are simply going to heat this tape to remove it. Gotta love it. Ugh. 
And I have watched videos where people have taped the entire back side of the board. That's not necessary. You just need to tape along the edges where you will have resin. Gotta love it. And our last side. And again, I'm going to heat this one more time. Just to trim the lip off of this. If there is a lip, yep. right now and this little thing of pink paint here you can just And then I always um, and then I just always sand this edge to make sure it's perfectly smooth. So let me get my sander. Where's my sander?
dust off of here. I'm just using an alcohol wipe to wipe any little bit of dust off of here. And I want you to see just how nice, how nice and clean that finished edge is. That is gorgeous. Alrighty. So then the very last thing that I do is I oil the board before I ship it. So we're going to put some oil on this one. I am using uh, 13 Chefs. It says food grade mineral oil. Uh, it's for cutting boards, butcher blocks, wood furniture. It seals the surface and more. So that's what we're going to do. Just a drizzle. That's all you need. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, I'm always saying there are people that uh, apply the oil with a cloth. Um, however, I don't use a cloth because when I've done that, my feeling was that the cloth absorbed most of the oil. And so I use my fingers instead. set for about 15 minutes and then we can come back and wipe any excess oil off uh, as I'm looking at this you can see where the resin ran over just a tad right there but that doesn't affect anything yeah you want to give the the oil a chance to soak into the wood and we for all intents and purposes are done And so this is a perfect gift if you are hosting uh, or helping someone host a baby shower. Uh, and this is a gift that you can present to the mom-to-be. Uh, open this gift when you first get there as they're setting up. Uh, and then she can not only see this and say, oh, that's beautiful. Um, but again, she can use it.